Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. We're at Supercomputing 2018. And one of the challenges you'll hear a lot at the show is overcoming the I.O. bottlenecks in traditional parallel file systems as it relates to the HPC environment. Joining me to talk about that is Sven Uma. He is with uh, DDN. Uh, thanks for joining us, Sven. Hi, uh, my name is Sven Uma. I'm DDN's chief research officer. I'm responsible for the strategy of all products within DDN. That's great. So, uh, Sven, you know, we've got drawn up here a couple of things. I think this is sort of the traditional parallel file system, great. and we're going to save that part for later. But why don't you talk about sort of what the life of an I.O. in a traditional uh, file system in an HPC workload? Yeah, let me set up the picture a little bit. So okay. what I see here on the top is basically the clients. Uh, down here are the servers. Obviously, we, lot, lost, uh, we left out a lot of complexity like networking and, and connectivity. So they're not wirelessly connected. Yeah, they're okay. not wirelessly okay. connected yet. Yeah. We're working on that. But yeah. um, eventually, what I'm going to show you is how I.O. flows uh, in a traditional distributed parallel file system and then contrast this to how we can significantly accelerate that. Okay, great. Let's jump into it. So um, when you uh, look at a traditional file system, what you typically have is uh, in some of the more complex workloads where there is a lot of contention going on, mm -hmm. um, let's say you have a very, very large file and there is a lot of overlapping I.O. going on between multiple clients. Okay. So how that will look like is typically that a client um, sends his data down to a deterministically um, you know, selected server and what happens after this I.O. was done, uh, the server typically sends it to some storage device and down here you basically see you know, read, modify, writes going on um, in, in order to um, basically satisfy that I.O. requirement. Okay. So if you only have a single client doing a lot of small I.O.s, that adds a lot of load to the storage subsystem, right. but it's not necessarily the most complex workload, but it um, basically takes away a lot of performance capabilities of the system very quickly. Sure. The workloads that are much more complicated is if multiple clients actually try to write into very overlapping or the same data in the system. Okay. So now these clients uh, typically send data to the same storage controllers, um, or the same nodes that is attached to the storage controller, and there is even more read, modify, writes going on, and you have a lot of contention essentially on these resources. So it's almost like a queuing problem, right? I got all this stuff stacking up. It, it's a queuing problem, but it's also disk drives have never really been built for right. massive amount of random I/O. Okay. So if there is a lot of these very contentious workloads going on, you know, particularly if you have overlaps, maybe the other no, maybe there is some read that needs to happen first before mm -hmm. write can be served. Right. So there is a lot of amplification going on. Okay. And so this is what you typically. See in a, in a traditional file system. And uh, obviously, the, the more we scale that out, we've only got a, a few nodes running yes. there, but when you get into hundreds of nodes, it just gets yes. exactly. magnified, right? Yes, exactly. That's okay. exactly what happens. Great. Yeah. So let's talk about how you guys are uh, addressing the issue. So we built a product uh, by the name of IME, Infinite Memory Engine. And what the IME product essentially does is, uh, think about it as a layer you can put in between your clients and an existing parallel file system. So that's one of the key things. You don't have to buy complete new infrastructure. You basically take an existing system and you add it as an acceleration layer. And so um, the real true benefits it provides is that similar activities that is going on over here is now slightly different. So the client's going to send the requests down uh, to the IME nodes. It's done through the DHT. Basically, deterministically, we, de we determine which node is, is the one that is receiving this I.O. And so these nodes essentially have um, several NVMe drives uh, each inside of them. Let me draw a couple of them. And did you, do you add nodes as you need to scale your yeah. workload? So, so you okay. can scale them out similarly. You can scale out clients and okay. you can scale out the, the server layer. And so basically what happens is these clients now sending their IOs to the IME nodes. And so the key thing is that within the IME layer, the IOs essentially get sequentially streamed um, in larger chunks okay. uh, onto the IME nodes. So it's more than just putting a bunch of fast drives in there? Yes, exactly. Okay. Gotcha. So essentially, depending on the I.O. size that the client issues, if the IOs are very, very small, the data gets mirrored because it's far more efficient. As soon as the data uh, basically exceeds a certain threshold, we start doing rate erasure encoding. Okay. And you actually can configure the system with multiple erasure codes. So you can do like a plus two, and you can do a plus one. So you can have basically different fault tolerances. Okay. And so as more nodes you have, obviously you have more flexibility. So it's, gotcha. it's, it's, it's very, um, you can do a lot of very interesting things with it. Okay. And so the key is, um, as soon as these devices fill up, so obviously we, we write them lock structured, 
which means we significantly reduce the wear out and write amplification on the drives. Right. So even if you use you know, not super enterprise grade NVMe drives, you still get significant performance out of them because it's a very sequential-ish workload. Yeah, you're the managing the, the management. We, we're yeah. basically kind of managing the way the flash is, right. is being addressed. Okay. And then as soon as we have a certain threshold inside the IME layer, we try to find basically pieces that belong together and then send them down uh, to the servers that have the traditional disk-based uh, or typical disk-based storage system attached to it. And then the I.O. on that system is uh, almost purely sequential because we find large concatenating pieces. Gotcha. And so you get significant bandwidth out of this layer because that workload is just better for disk drives. Right. I was going to say it's almost yeah. custom designed for a disk drive, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's, yeah. that's incredible. Right. So just real quickly then, you know, I, if I'm kind of a, a guy designing one of these, I'm thinking, well, why don't I just throw NVMe in my my traditional uh, file system over here, what's the problem doing that? I guess yeah. you're lacking stuff, right? Yes, and, and, and you can, and it has significant benefits for some workloads, but right. it doesn't help really with all workloads. Gotcha. And um, so by putting it in this layer, first of all, you can reuse existing infrastructure you already purchased. Okay. NVMe is quite expensive, so you don't want to deploy you know, massive petabytes on that. Sure unless you can afford it, obviously. So using this in order to extend the lifetime of an existing system uh, is quite interesting. So I, I think that makes a lot of sense from you know why this layer exists and, and the intelligence that you guys are really putting into this. Do, do you have any customer examples that you could share with us? Oh yeah, actually the uh, top one spot in the IO500 benchmark, okay. uh, the customer's name is uh, JCAHPC. Uh, they achieve 1.4 terabytes per second throughput with wow. such a system with a very complex workload. Um, and they were able by uh, basically sliding in an IME layer in order to accelerate the workload, they made it faster, but at the same time they were able to reduce the total footprint of the system by roughly a factor of 15 or even more. Uh, because now the majority of the heavy lifting I.O. Right. is done by the IME layer while the bandwidth problem is, is, is solved by the disk drives. You know, that's a really good point. I mean, you've got almost a ripple effect on the ROI, right? Because you can, you can because I, I guess in, without this sort of technology, the only way you scale is just adding nodes to infinitum, right? right? Now you can really condense that down, yeah. right? So you essentially solve the capacity problem down here and you solve the right. I.O. problem up here. Yeah, and building new data centers is really expensive. Yes, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, Sven, thanks very much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Sure, thank you. So there you have it. If you're looking for ways to solve the uh, I.O. bottlenecks that you're seeing in your uh, parallel file systems, uh, look at uh, DDN's IME. Uh, you know, it can obviously improve performance, it can reduce footprint, and more importantly, one of the things we said at the very beginning, do so without changing all the work you've already done. So a pretty seamless uh, uh, type of transition. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst of Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.